In this video, I show you how to photograph and Photoshop a light bulb so it appears to be powered without wires. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Here's your host, Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. Now today I'm going to show you how to create this amazing light bulb picture that looks so simple. But look closer, there's no electricity powering the light bulb. How's that done? Well, I'm going to show you how it's done, and it's fairly tricky, unless you know the secrets. And I'll share all the secrets with you as we go through the shoot. Okay, let's start with the equipment. First thing you're going to need is a light bulb, fairly obviously, and in this case I'm using a clear glass light bulb. You also need to rig this up to a dimmer circuit as well, and that allows you to control the brightness of the light. We're going to make sure that this is the only source of light in the photograph. Yep, that's right, no flashes, no external lights. I wanted to keep this tutorial as simple as I possibly could. Rigging it to the dimmer switch is a really useful thing, but if you're not familiar with electrics, then ask an electrician to do this for you. You don't want to play with electricity, it can be very dangerous. For my camera, I'm going to be using a Canon 5D, and it's got my 24-105 lens on the front, which is my favourite lens. As far as the tripod goes, I'm using my favourite tripod, which is the Vanguard 283 CT. It's a carbon fibre tripod, which means it's very, very strong, very, very light, and really sturdy. It's teamed up with the Vanguard GH300 head, which is a really solid head with a pistol grip that allows me to move things around, and really is my favourite tripod and head combination. Okay, so that's the basic setup. Let's clear the desk and we'll start taking the photographs. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is to get your bulb really clean, and I mean spotlessly clean. The cleaner you can get this bulb now, the less Photoshop work you're gonna to have to do. So uh, get a really good cloth. This is the one I actually use to clean my lenses, so you know, it's a really good cloth. And give this a very nice clean and remove all the fingerprints that you can, and we'll put it back in the bulb holder. Okay, now I'm gonna turn up the brightness of the bulb so it is bright, but it's not kind of that bright. It's not intensely full power. The reason I've got a dimmer circuit here is because I wanna keep it around about that brightness so it's bright, but it doesn't overpower and it doesn't cause flare or problems in the photograph. Now that works pretty well. I'm, I'm happy with that. Let's take a picture and see how it actually looks. Not expecting great things, but we'll see the progression as we add more and more elements to complete the picture. Okay, so let's come in nice close. Take the shot. Yeah, okay, it looks pretty, well, terrible as you might imagine. I've set the white balance to tungsten, so we've got a, a blue color cast on the surrounding uh, areas, but it isn't a particularly good photograph. It's the background, it's not really adding anything. So let's add our own background. Now I'm going to use a piece of black card for my background and we're just going to pop that in behind the bulb. You could use a pop-up background. We've used one before in previous videos for portraits. That would also work here as well, but uh, I'm just going to keep it nice and simple and just use a piece of black card. Let's take the photo, see how that changes things. Now when I take the photograph, now you can see this looks pretty good. This is looking better. It's got a darker background and that makes the light bulb stand out. It's not really standing out quite enough for me. What I would like is more of a rim lighting around the outside of the bulb and I'm not seeing that at the moment. So to create the rim lighting I'm going to use a couple more boxes but I'm also going to surround the bulb with white. Now my white is just a piece of A4 paper that I've torn in half and sellotaped together. And the reason I've done that is when I pop this over the bulb, it's gonna cause a little kind of archway. And because the bulb is the only part that's illuminated in this entire photograph, that archway of light should give a rim light around the edge of the bulb. That's a theory, let's see if it works. Well, it kinda does and it kinda doesn't. 
Yes, it's giving a lighter edge, but it's also giving a lighter front as well, because bulbs reflect light from all directions. They are a nightmare to photograph. That's why these are harder than they look. The secret is just to make sure the lighting is from behind. So I'm pulling the bulb further and further away from the background, and as I do, I can see the rim of light just going further and further to the edge. Now, once I've got it right on the edge, or thereabouts, I know I'm in the right place. So looking at mine, I reckon about there. Okay, let's take that shot and see how that looks. Now that looks much better. Ignore the white arch around the outside. That's gonna be removed inside of Photoshop. But now I've got what I'm after, that bright edge around the bulb. Okay, so we're getting there. We're getting closer to where it needs to be. Now we're gonna to have to deal with those reflections on the front. So I'm going to put a couple more bits of black card up, but this time I'm going to put them along the sides. And effectively what we're going to make is a tunnel. So our tunnel is going to be black, but with a white end. And the white end will reflect around the edges, and the black will give us the darkness to remove any weird reflections from the beginning of the bulb. And hopefully that should work much better. Yeah, now we're getting there. Now we have a much deeper black bulb and that nice white edge. This is really coming together well. There's still a couple of weird reflections and to remove those, I'm gonna put a lid or a roof on our tunnel. So we'll just put a couple more bits of black card along the top like that. And we'll take the shot again. And there we go. That is as clean and dark as we're ever gonna get it. We've made a tunnel for the light that's white at one end and black the most of the, the way you're down the, the tunnel. And that is giving a brilliant effect. Yes, there's a bit of Photoshop required, but not as much as there could have been. Okay, now you'll notice there's something missing from this. Where's the bottom of the bulb? Because it's in the bulb holder. Well, that's where the little secret comes in because we're gonna dismantle all of this, get rid of everything here. We'll lose those and we're gonna get the bulb and just turn it on its side. Okay, so that's now still on, it's still illuminating, but it's now side on. And I'm gonna get a second bulb and I'm gonna put that in its place. And I'm just gonna use a little roll of sellotape just so it sticks up in the air. And that we're gonna photograph using very similar lighting in effect. Here we go. And that's then gonna become the bottom of my bulb. So we're gonna cut that out in Photoshop and we're gonna add it to our bulb and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So inside of Photoshop CS6, first thing I'm gonna do is just open up the raw file that has the last photo of that little sequence that we shot. And first thing I'm gonna do is just run down through the, the list here in the, the basic panel. So white balance, I did set the camera to tungsten white balance, but when you dim a bulb down, the temperature becomes warmer. And as a result, it's perhaps still a little bit on the warm side. Although I like that in the middle, I'm not so keen on it around the edges. So I'm just gonna bring the color temperature down a little lower. Next, I'm gonna run down through my other sliders. Exposure looks okay, contrast fine. Highlights, I'm gonna bring those back where I can to recover details, particularly in the, the filament area here. Uh, shadows, we're gonna bring that down as well so we get some more black shadows coming through. The whites I'll leave alone for now and the blacks I'm gonna bring those down as well. Now you might think what I've done is actually made everything much darker and you kinda be right. I'm gonna increase the clarity obviously because <laughs> wouldn't be one of my photos if I didn't put some clarity in and I'm gonna increase the vibrance as well. That's better but it's still looking a little bit wimpy. So we're gonna reverse what we've just done, but only in a few areas. And that means working with an adjustment brush for local changes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the highlights and I'm gonna push the highlights up with a small brush. Let's reduce the size. And I'm just gonna paint that around the edge of the bulb. And you can see how that brings back that brighter edge. I'm not worrying about the paper. I can live without that. I don't worry about that at all. And we'll also bring back the highlights in the center of the bulb like that. Okay, so I'm kind of happy with how that's looking. Let's go back into that adjustment brush. We'll add a new brush and we'll just turn the shadows down and we'll just return the shadows down a little bit deeper and darker if we can, that's good. 
And also, whilst I'm here, let's make another new brush and I'll increase the color temperature and we'll just paint a little bit more warmth on that filament area like that. And that just brings back that color that I had, but gives me a nice balance between where I was before and what I've got now. So just to show you, that was the camera royal default and that's with a bit of processing just to darken down those edges and uh, darken down the center, but lighten up the edges. Okay, there's still some more to do here. So I'll open the image into Photoshop and we'll do the last bits here. Now, the outer area of this bulb is black, which means I can simply get a black paintbrush and we'll get a nice big paintbrush and we'll make sure it's a nice hard edge as well. And all I need to do then is just paint around the outside with a big brush, just like that. And that gets rid of all of that area. See, I told you those, that archway was going to disappear. Okay, so I'm happy with that. That looks pretty good. But now what I need to do is just tidy up everything a little bit because there is a, a quite a few little marks and bits and pieces. So I'm just going to get the spot healing brush and I'm just going to start spot healing as many of these as I can. And this is why I said cleaning your bulb makes sense right at the beginning to minimize this amount of work. Even with a clean bulb, there's going to be imperfections and bits of dust and other stuff that's just going to flare up. Now, that will get rid of the small stuff, and I'll finish that off in just a moment. But what about the big bits? Well, the reflections internally in the bulb, you can't do anything about those in the taking stage. But what I can do is swap to the patch tool, and I can just patch a few of these away just to remove them in the post-production here. So I'm going to go round and finish this off using a combination of the patch tool and the healing brush just to get rid of all of this stuff. And then you can just join me in just a second for you when this is all done. Okay, so there we go. That literally probably took maybe two, three minutes or so just to remove the worst of the dust spots. But it, I've left this glow in the middle because that's important. It's all part of the feeling of this light bulb. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm now going to deal with the bottom of the bulb where there should be a bottom of the bulb. But of course, it's hidden in the bulb holder. So I'm going to open up the uh, the second photograph. Now, I've already run this through RAW just to save a bit of time. Actually, I didn't really do very much to it. All I'm going to do is just select it and we'll copy that. And that's the bit of the, the bulb we actually want. And then we're going to paste that in like that. And obviously, it's the, uh, the wrong way up. So let's go and do a bit of free transform. Edit and free transform. We'll spin this around a little bit and we'll bring it down. And I'll drop the opacity down so I can see how this is going to fit in because I didn't really spend as much time and effort as I should have done to get this absolutely square when I took the photograph, which means I need to spend a moment or two longer now getting this absolutely square and that should do the job fine. So we'll put the opacity back, we'll click on the tick, I'll put a layer mask on that layer and then I'm just going to get a, a paintbrush and we'll just mask that off. So let's get a small brush. We'll make sure it's nice and soft and we'll just mask that down to reveal the original below. There we go. OK, so that's added in the new base to my bulb. So I'm happy with that. Last thing that I want to do then is just do the effect where it looks like it's lying flat on the ground. Now, we didn't have it flat on the ground for obvious reasons. It was hard enough to do standing up, but it's not a problem. We're going to put this down as a flattened image. And then I'm going to make a copy of that layer. And that's the one we're then going to lie down flat. So let's use free transform once again. And I'm just going to roughly rotate this around. But for this to work, I, I, I can't really have rough. I'm going to need exact. So to get it exactly flat, I'm going to use a little hidden tool, the ruler tool just underneath the eyedropper tool. And that allows me to draw out a nice straight line and say, yep, that should be horizontal straighten layer and that will straighten the layer up. Now all I need to do is make another copy of that layer layer and we'll duplicate that layer once again. And once again, we'll use a bit of uh, transform, but this time we're going to flip it vertically and I'll drag that down probably down there somewhere. 
We'll just change the blending mode for this layer from normal to the magic blending mode screen. And that allows me to see what's going on. And now I can go in really close and just line things up and check everything looks about right. I'm leaving a little gap there. That gives the impression of depth of material. All adds to the, the effect of the reflection. Now, obviously, it's not really reflected in there until we do a few other little things. We're going to put a filter blur and we're going to Gaussian blur this up a little bit. I'm just going to Gaussian blur this about 10 pixels or thereabouts. And then again, I'm going to put a layer mask on and I'm going to get a paintbrush. We'll use a bigger brush and we'll just mask this down. OK, so we're going to remove some of the reflection from below. We'll get a bigger brush and we'll just leave some of that in there and some of it out and that just gives the impression that there is a reflection and it becomes even more obvious if you just drop the opacity for that reflected layer down just a little bit okay there you go we can grab those two layers and move them into the middle of the shot flatten everything down and that's it there is my picture completed so there you go, there's how you can create amazing light bulb pictures using pretty minimal equipment. Now, if you want to find out more about Adorama and get more episodes of Adorama TV, don't forget to click on the subscribe button. Where is the subscribe button on this video? I know where it is. It's right down there. Click on the subscribe button and get videos from myself, Mark Wallace, Joe DiMaggio, Joe McNally, Brian Peterson, Tamara Lackey. Subscribe. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.